Japan is an island nation that many people think they know since Japanese culture and arts have become widespread throughout the rest of the world. But the truth is that knowing a bit about manga and Final Fantasy just doesn't cut the mustard when it comes to Japan. There's much, much more to this strangely exotic country. And for this reason, we give you the 10 things you didn't know about Japan. One of the most interesting trends to have arisen in Japan in recent years is the lack of interest in dating, sex, and marriage in both the male and female population. In fact, one poll cited information suggesting that 46% of Japanese women have either no interest or despise sex with men following slightly lower percentages. It's not clear how this came to be, but there are theories. One theory suggests that the stressful nature of Japanese work life, along with marriage stress, is preventing young people from engaging in traditional dating and mating interests, while another theory suggests it is related to the high financial costs of both dating and marriage, as well as children. The Japanese government itself has called it celibacy syndrome and is actively looking for a solution to this problem, although beyond government coercion and force, it is unlikely any solution is on the horizon. Related to the disinterest in dating, marriage, and sex is the phenomenon of herbivore men, a term first coined by a Japanese academic some years back. Grass eaters, as they are referred to in Japanese, are a not-so-small percentage of the male population with little to no interest in any of the traditional roles expected of Japanese men. Much of the grass eater phenomenon can be understood in light of Japan's traditional salaryman economic structure and work life. In earlier decades, it was expected that Japanese men upon graduation, would spend the rest of their lives working long work weeks, often into the wee hours of the morning, coming home exhausted and feeling awful upon coming home, and many of the grass eater men grew up observing their own fathers engaged in such behavior and actively thought and realized that such a life might not be the best for them. Additionally, as cited previously, marriage and children are very expensive prospects in Japan and it is difficult to realistically acquire the money to be able to support that sort of lifestyle. Grass-eater men typically are viewed as very effeminate and girly, taking a keen interest in hair and clothing styles, but many are just reclusive and rarely leave their homes. Some estimates suggest that as much as 60% of Japanese men in their 20s might be considered herbivore men, which is a startling number if you think about it. Regardless, unless something drastically changes in Japan at the societal level, the grass-eater phenomenon might become the norm in the next few decades. Japan is situated in the collision zone of at least four lithospheric plates, the Eurasian Chinese plate, the North American plate, the Philippine plate, and the Pacific plate. The continuous movements of these plates generate a lot of energy released from time to time in earthquakes and tsunamis of varying magnitudes and effects. Written records of strong earthquakes date back at least 1,600 years. Until the 19th century, however, Japanese naturalists were less interested in exploring the cause of earthquakes than the effects of such an extraordinary event, and mythical, mystical explanations prevailed. Regardless, because of Japan's unique geological situation, earthquakes have become a part of its history as well as having been woven into the very fabric of Japanese society. It is not uncommon to experience tremors on a weekly basis in any major city, and things that would throw off many people living in larger European cities are just taken for granted in Japan due to its earthquake-prone nature. Because of this, the Japanese government has invested a great deal of time and infrastructure into earthquake detection and damage prevention, although it is impossible to fully protect the population from this deadly natural occurrence, one that happens far too frequently in Japan. One of the more fascinating aspects of Japanese cultural history was the phenomenon of seppuku. Sometimes called harakiri in the West, seppuku was a form of ritual suicide that originated with Japan's ancient samurai warrior class. This brutal act typically involves stabbing oneself in the belly with a short sword, slicing open the stomach, and then turning the blade upwards to ensure a fatal wound. Some practitioners of seppuku allowed themselves to die slowly, but they usually enlisted the help of another warrior who would chop off their head with a katana as soon as they had made their initial cut. The entire process was accompanied by great ceremony and pomp. Among other rituals, the doomed individual often drank sake and composed a short death poem before taking up the blade. Seppuku first developed in the 12th century as a means for samurai to achieve an honorable death. Warriors performed the ritual to avoid capture following battlefield defeats but it also functioned as a means of protest and a way of expressing grief over the death of a revered leader. 
Beginning in the 1400s, seppuku evolved into a common form of capital punishment for samurai who had committed crimes. In each case, it was considered an act of extreme bravery and self-sacrifice that embodied Bushido, the ancient warrior code of the samurai. There was even a female version of seppuku called jigai, which involved cutting the throat using a special knife known as a tanto. Seppuku fell out of favor with the decline of the samurai in the late 19th century and the modernization of Japan, but the practice didn't disappear entirely. The most famous case in recent history concerns Yukio Mishima, a renowned novelist and Nobel Prize nominee who committed ritual seppuku in 1970 after leading a failed coup against the Japanese government. It might seem nearly superfluous to mention Japanese food, because every Tom, Dick, and Harry these days knows things like sushi and teriyaki, but if you thought that was the be-all and end-all of Japanese food, you would be very, very wrong. Japanese food can be far more exotic than just that, and there are many Japanese specialties that are only available in Japan. Perhaps the most exotic thing you can eat in Japan is fugu, or blowfish. Special care must be taken in preparation of this dish because of the inherently toxic nature of the fish in question. And if you aren't the conservationist type, you might want to try whale or dolphin meat, which can be risky too because of the high levels of mercury found in it. Then, there is the famous Kobe beef, which is a type of beef taken from the Wagyu cattle, a group of Japanese cattle breeds that produce very high quality meat. Finally, while you might think that the sushi near you is just fine, it cannot hold a candle to the sushi prepared in Japan itself, which might be a good reason to visit Japan. Excluding human beings, the Japanese macaque is the northernmost primate in the entire world. Found from the southernmost islands of the country to the northernmost tip of the main island Honshu, this curious monkey is renowned for its intelligence, highly social behavior, and its favorite pastime of bathing in hot springs in the cold winter months while grooming the other members of the troop. These curious little primates are possibly the most interesting animal to be found in Japan. A rather depressing term used to describe the period of recent Japanese history when decades of economic growth and prosperity ended when in the late 1980s abnormalities within the Japanese economic system had fueled a speculative asset price bubble of a massive scale. The bubble was caused by the excessive loan growth quotas dictated to the banks by Japan's central bank, the Bank of Japan, through a policy mechanism known as window guidance. This led to the collapse of the tremendous economic growth in the 1990s. Some economists and historians even go as far to call this period not the lost decade, but the lost score, or 20 years, and believe that Japan has never fully recovered from this series of economic blunders. While the West might have an open-door policy on the allowance of immigrants into its ranks, with some countries being more liberal than others on this front, Japan has had the opposite strategy. Japanese people are very concerned about the preservation of their culture and heritage, and fear that allowing an unchecked influx of immigrants might be harmful to its continuation. As a consequence, the Japanese government is exceptionally careful about whom it lets in, and only the most skilled of skilled workers have even a chance of getting a working visa. A minority found only in Japan, specifically on the northernmost isle of Hokkaido, the Ainu people remain a mystery in terms of their origin and where they originally came from, although it is safe to say that their presence predates the arrival of the Yamato or Japanese people. Morphologically and culturally very distinct from the Japanese, the Ainu have all but disappeared from the scenery of Japan, and most of what remains is kept up through artificial preservation and intervention. The Ainu, like many minorities, have become a casualty of history. Like many modern countries, Japan has been struggling with low birth rates and few solutions to the problem. Generally speaking, it can be observed that low birth rates arise everywhere there is modernization and industrialization, and thus the solution cannot be easy. Some Japanese think the use of robots might be a solution, while others believe that government tax credits to incentivize couples to reproduce are better. Regardless, no country has found an actual workable solution to this problem, and thus the long-term future of Japan might very well be called into question. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.